Mike Barry, thanks very much for a great speech and done within the time. It puts tremendous pressure on our next speaker, I have to say. <laughs> His name is Paul McManus of ESB. Paul. Um, that's some challenge. Well done, Mike. I'll do my best. Um, first of all, Jim, well done on Lisbon. You know, we were all behind you. Great job done. And uh, this is a fantastic room. I was really impressed when I came in here this morning when I walked into the quadrangle. I said, my God, why haven't I been here before? It's a fantastic place. And then I saw the glow on my fellow CEO colleagues from the semi-state sector, David Gunning and, and uh, Gabriel Darcy here, who were in the armed forces before. And uh, you know, they were so happy to be back in the officer's mess. That's why there's big windows in the officer's mess, so you can see everything that's going on. I have 20 slides, and they're really good slides. I can say they're really good slides because I didn't prepare them myself, but I'm not going to show them to you now, you know, so you're all right. Um, so I've decided to, to talk a little bit about um, the fact that we need to move away from the fact that sustainability is a cost and that because we are in a recession, we can't afford it anymore. Um, because I think that is exactly the wrong uh, approach to take. Now, we all know that money is scarce, and when money is scarce, it's expensive, so we have to be prudent, but we have no alternative to go down this road. Um, you know, a bit of hobnobbing. I had lunch yesterday with the, the Minister for Energy from Bahrain. We've been working for him for a long time, and I said to him, how is the economy in the Middle East doing? He said, at $70 a barrel, why wouldn't it be doing fantastic? So just think of that. You know, we think of $70 a barrel. When it got to $70 a barrel, which was less than two years ago, we said, my God, $70 a barrel, we can't survive at this. Now we think it's fine. You know, everything thinks it's great. When oil got to $147 a barrel, people who had long-term 15-year contracts with us to, to buy their wind energy wanted out of those contracts. They wanted out of those contracts. Thankfully for them, the banks wouldn't let them out. We would have quite happily let them out of it. But you know, it just shows you how close the whole issue is to uh, the renewable sector and the sustainable sector being able to cash, being able to sort of su supply what we need. Now, Ireland has a few problems. We're small, very small economy. We don't have economies of scale. We're the size of Manchester. We have no fossil fuels. And we're at the end of the supply chain, so we pay the highest transportation charges of anybody else. So security of supply is a big issue for us. And I don't agree that gas and oil are going to run out as quickly as, say, the Green Party believe it. But I believe they're going to run out. And in the energy sector, it doesn't really matter that much. If it's 10 or 20 or 50 years, it doesn't really matter that much. We've got to prepare for a future where Ireland can sustain itself. And one of those things is you know, that we get that balance right between renewables, gas, and clean coal if it comes. And that is what the future of Ireland is going to be, renewables, gas, and clean coal. And we won't need clean coal in Ireland until 2025. So we can't sit back and let the big countries who, who, who need it really sort of more than we do, if you like, uh, to develop it. And we have got to drive in that direction. Now, we've got to sort of be realistic about where we are. So when people say, you know, and I hear some of our industry representatives say, it's time the government tackled energy costs because that's something they can do. I don't really understand that in the short term, except getting ESB to subsidize it. And by the end of next year, ESB will have subsidized the entire marketplace, not only our own customers, everyone's customer, to the tune of three quarters of a billion. We cannot sustain that. We can't sustain it as a company. You know, so we have to do something different, and we have got to prepare for the longer term. Now, I'm going to show you one slide here, which I think is important, if I can, if I can get to it. Uh, see all these wonderful slides? I'll give them to Tina if you want them. But this is the problem we have. We have climate change that's happening, and everybody accepts it's happening, and we have a security of supply issue. We rely totally on imported fossil fuels, and this is what we do. We have fossil fuel generation, we have large central grids, and we have a very passive customer. And what we need to do as a country is we need to chain all those customers, every customer, every domestic house, into a Jim O'Hara who manages their own uh, electricity supply. So the future has got to be sustainable generation. And for Ireland, I can guarantee you that will be coal, gas, and renewables. And we've made a commitment in ESB to have 33% of our portfolio by 2020 in renewables. And we've also made a commitment to generate electricity on this island without emitting CO2. So the future has got to be sustainable generation, smart networks that can accommodate all of the things that we've been talking about, that Mike has been talking about, people being able to sort of build distributed generation and feed it back or use it themselves, and interactive end users through a smart metering program where customers, you know, and they don't, by the way, 
They don't change their habits. Today, the electricity demand in Ireland is down about 6%. It's the first time since ESB was established in 1927 that the electricity has not, demand has not increased year on year. Even in the late 70s and early 80s, the worst year was 1979, we had half of 1% growth in demand for electricity. This year, we'll be down 6%, and there's no decrease in the domestic sector. So everyone, when you, you go home, the lights are all still on, you know, your daughter spends four hours in the shower, um, sorry girls, uh, and, and everything runs, so there's no change in the, in the domestic sector. The demand